Assalamu alaikum everyone, welcome back to another ATP video. Today we'll be talking about Klebsiella pneumonia. It'll be a short and concise video, so we hope you get the benefit out of it. Now have you ever thought about the history of Klebsiella? Well, we can briefly tell you about it. In 1882, Carl Friedlander first described Klebsiella pneumonia as an encapsulated bacillus after isolating the bacterium from the lungs of those who had died from pneumonia. And it makes sense that it was originally named Friedlander bacillus. Years later, the bacterium garnered the name Klebsiella. Today, Klebsiella is considered one of the most common bacteria encountered by physicians worldwide, especially in healthcare settings. This was just a very brief introduction about Klebsiella. Now let's move on and talk about its important features. Klebsiella pneumonia is a gram-negative facultative anaerobic bacillus that is part of the normal GI flora. It is immotile, so it doesn't move, and has very large polysaccharide capsule, which gives its colonies a striking mucoid appearance. It is lactose-fermenting bacteria that stain pink on McConkie's agar. It's also urease positive, and it's often resistant to antibiotic treatment. Now let's move on and talk about the unique virulence factors of Klebsiella. As we've just mentioned, Klebsiella has a capsule, and this capsule plays an important role in the pathogenicity of the organism, as it protects it from being phagocytosed, and it also has fimbria that allows the bacterium to adhere to host cells. Now how is this bacterium transmitted? Well, a person must be exposed to the bacterium, meaning that Klebsiella must enter the respiratory tract to cause pneumonia, or the blood to cause bloodstream infection. And it's quite important to know that the bacterium does not spread through air. In other words, it's not airborne disease. In fact, in healthcare settings, Klebsiella can spread through person-to-person -person contact, for example, from patient to patient via contaminated hands of healthcare personnel or other people. Also, patients in healthcare settings may get infection when they are placed on ventilators or connected to IV or urinary catheters. Now let's move on and talk about the clinical importance of Klebsiella. Klebsiella is known to cause infections, especially among people with impaired immune systems, such as alcoholics, diabetics, and those with chronic diseases. It's a common cause of nosocomial infections, also known as healthcare associated infections. And if you want to remember the most important ones, then keep in mind pneumonia and UTIs, as they are the most common clinical entities associated with Klebsiella though bacteremia and secondary spread to other areas such as the meninges and liver can occur as well. And here we'll be talking about pneumonia since as we said before it's one of the most common presentations in patients infected with Klebsiella. Patients tend to develop aspiration pneumonia. From its name it's via aspiration of GI content and this leads to low bar pneumonia that usually presents as a cavitary lesion on the lung which might be confused with secondary TB. People infected with Klebsiella usually cough this current jelly sputum, which is considered as a hallmark of infection with Klebsiella, and they have a higher tendency of developing lung abscesses as well. Now, how can we diagnose Klebsiella? The answer is so simple. It's via culturing. We've mentioned earlier that Klebsiella is a lactose-fermenting bacterium, so, it produces this pink colonies on differential agars such as McConkie's or EMB agar. Now let us discuss the treatment. Unfortunately, Klebsiella is one of the hardest organisms to treat because of its drug resistance that can vary greatly. And as a result, the choice of the drug depends on the results of sensitivity testing. Carbapenem resistant strains are an important cause of hospital acquired infections and are resistant to many antibiotics. In such cases, an aminoglycoside such as gentamicin and a cephalosporin such as cefotaxime are used empirically until the results of testing are available. There is no vaccine against Klebsiella. However, huge number of infections, especially in the hospital settings, can be prevented by simple general measures such as strict adherence to hand hygiene, preferably using an alcohol-based hand rubs as they are effective against these gram-negative germs or with soap and water, removing catheters when they are no longer needed, taking proper care of respiratory therapy devices, 
and wearing gowns and gloves before entering rooms where patients with Klebsiella-related illnesses are housed. Alright, to sum up, we've reached the end of our video, and now let us sum up the points that we have discussed today. So, Klebsiella is a gram-negative rod that is encapsulated. It's resistant to antibiotics, it can cause pneumonia in alcoholics, diabetics, and sick patients. Also, it's a known cause of nosocomial infections, especially pneumonia and UTIs. A helpful mnemonic for Klebsiella is A, B, C, D, E. A for aspiration, B for abscess in lung and liver, C for current jelly sputum, E for diabetes, and E for ethanol abuse, which is alcohol. And that's it for Klebsiella. We hope you found it beneficial. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to receive our latest explanations. And as always, thanks for watching.